Welcome to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm joined in the studio this afternoon by Mr. Javier Jasnikovsky, who is the Head of Operational Safety for the Subdivision of Operational Safety and Human Elements for the Maritime Safety Division for the International Maritime Organization of the IMO. That's a short bit. Uh, Javier, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, have you you've taken the time to be here at WRC 23. Why is this an important event for the International Maritime Organization? Well, first of all, thank you for uh, having invited us. And it's a pleasure to be here this year participating in WRC 23. Uh, I represent the International Maritime Organization. That is a specialized uh, UN agency with responsibility for the safety and security of ships and also the prevention of uh, marine and atmospheric pollution from ships. Uh, there are a number of issues that we are looking to address uh, in terms of uh, regulatory developments uh, in ITU. Um, that most of them will uh, concern maritime services. Uh, in particular, we are looking at establishing uh, new systems uh, for uh, the global maritime distress and safety system. So we would like to ensure that the necessary actions are taken to uh, allocate the necessary spectrum. Uh, but you are also presenting our position uh, to protect the spectrum already allocated from any potential interference or from other regulatory uh, measures that may be adopted at this uh, WRC. Now, there's been a great collaboration between IMO and ITU. It's a very significant when it comes to maritime safety. Perhaps I could ask you to elaborate on how the two organisations work together. Certainly. Uh, there is a long history uh, of a good collaboration between IMO and ITU. Uh, both are sister organizations, UN organizations, and I can say that since early 2000, we have established even a, an intersessional working group that meets uh, on an annual basis uh, to address uh, ma uh, issues related to maritime radio communications. Um, we work together, we send liaison statements from, between two organizations, and we establish regular communications in preparation for uh, World Radio Conferences. Uh, but the collaboration is not just at institutional level, there is also good collaboration at secretariat level. Um, we cooperate uh, quite a lot, in particular with uh, Carly's uh, Borges, the head of uh, Fixed and Mobile uh, Maritime Services uh, Division, um, which I appreciate really quite a lot. Um, but we also collaborate in matters matter related to technical cooperation activities and also the revision of publications and, and other things. So I think there is a good, well-standing collaboration between, two, between the two organizations. What are the uh, key spectrum areas that the IMO would like the uh, WRC to address? And, and how would that impact the work of the IMO? Well, uh, as you may know, over 80% of goods that are transported by sea. Um, it is really relevant, really relevant for us that we ensure that enough spectrum is allocated for maritime services. Uh, we have uh, recently revised one of the chapters of our convention, SOLAS Chapter 4 on Maritime Radio Communications, that will come and will enter into force on 1st January 2024. There are a number of uh, revisions and new systems that will be implemented um, we are foreseeing the necessary regulatory actions by ITU to ensure that these systems will, will, will come into effect. Uh, some of them are related to the implementation of the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, or the GMDSS. Um, there are terrestrial systems, satellite systems associated to it, uh, the concept of e-navigation, and also the recognition of new mobile satellite services that are in a way of implementation. And what are IMO's views regarding impending digitalization? Well, digitalization is uh, one of the hot topics, I could say, currently at IMO. And IMO is very supportive of initiating discussions in terms of digitalization of voice communications in particular. But in addition to that, there is uh, far more work being conducted within IMO in terms of digitalization, data exchange between ships themselves and also between ships and shore. Um, we are considering and addressing many of these matters and looking forward to collaborating with the work of ITU in the future. Well, Javier Janikowski, thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio and we look forward to catching up with you again at some stage in the near future. Well, thank you for inviting us and it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. 
And if you've enjoyed this interview, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on our podcast channel, SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.